Good evening, good evening, good evening. I am Pastor Gary Mack down here at Shallow Baptist Church. One church in two locations. I'm in the Port Norris location, and we welcome you to our seven evening, Saturday, excuse me, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Bible study class. God bless you. We ask you to take this time to call somebody up. Tell them to join us on Facebook Live and also on YouTube. Shallow Baptist Church, SBC Praise Church. Join there's a word for you tonight. I am excited. We're finishing up our three-week series called One Accord, United with Christ We Stand. And truly, you're going to be blessed tonight. This is our last night, and we're going to wrap it up. There's so much impact, and I can't wait to dive into it. But I want to take this opportunity to thank all the listeners, our Shallow Baptist family, for those who might be listening for the first time. If you want to be a part of this ministry and you want to be a blessing to Shallow Baptist Church and get the word out, you can help us out. And all you have to do is push that like button and share, and the gospel will be spread abroad, and you will get rewarded for that. God has rewards stored up just for you for helping spread the gospel. It's just like if you were preaching it, if you share the word of God with somebody else. Amen? Um, we're going to pray, and then we're going to get right into it. Like I said, I'm Pastor Gary Mack. For those who don't know me, I'm one of the associate pastors here. And our senior pastor is Dr. Reverend James Allen Duncans, who I want to give a special thanks to for uh, sharing the stage with us and with me and my family to be able to share the good news that God has given us. And the, like I said, the title of the class, once again, is called One Accord. This is part three. Uh, last week, we talked about the purpose the week before that, the first week we talked about the oneness of being a one accord, the power that comes with that. And we talked about how God, the Father, and God, the Son, which is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, are united together as one. We looked at the purpose, the purpose of God, the reason why he came. What was the reason why Jesus Christ came? We talked about that. We're going to get a little bit into it after we pray. But I want you to join in with, with, with uh, a moment of prayer. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of sickness, there's a lot of death, there's a lot of chaos all over the world. Over in Ukraine and Russia, we know what's going on, but I believe in the power of prayer. The enemy can't stop believers who know how to pray and believe by faith. So right now, let's take the opportunity right now. You will bow with me, and we're going to get right into this. Amen? Father God in heaven, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. And Lord, I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Because of what you have done for all of us. You have brought us from a mighty long way, Lord. You have restored us. You kept us. You protect, protected us. You made provision for us. And Lord, we can't thank you enough. It's been said many times. If we had a thousand tongues, Lord, we couldn't thank you enough for all you've done. But right now, I take the opportunity to say thank you. I pray that you go with me as we dive into your word. As we break bread together, one with another. With my sister and my brother over the airway. We're virtual, and Lord, we know the Word of God can travel all over this world. So right now, Lord, we ask you have your way. Lord, be a part of this Bible study class, and Lord, prepare the hearts of your people. Somebody's going through something right now, they don't think they can get out. But Lord, I believe if they discover the benefits that come with the oneness, being united with you, Lord, I believe that better days are yet ahead of them. So Lord, we glorify you right now. I ask you to glorify me that I may glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give the Lord a hand real quick. Praise. Amen. One accord, united with Christ we stand. I'm so glad that I am united with Christ and not with money, not with fame. Money's good. Hey, I like to have some money. I like that. Ain't nothing wrong with money. Nothing wrong with fame. But out of control, if it's not managed well, it could be deadly. It could be dangerous. But I'm united with something that will always stand. The Bible tells us plainly in St. John that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. And the Word, verse 13, verse said, and the Word became flesh. We know that the Word is Jesus Christ. Uh, Son in the flesh and dwelt among us. He lived among us. He, he ate with them. He walked with them. He set an example for them. 
And what they did, the followers, they ate off of what Christ was giving them. They fed off of his wisdom, his knowledge, his experience. Not knowing fully that he was the son of God, but they discovered it in time. And we know Jesus Christ's word. The Bible tells us plainly that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall stand for eternity. And I'm so grateful tonight that I am united, and so are you. You got something to praise God for is being united with Christ. We can't even unite with each other until we first unite with Christ. Because he set a perfect example of what unity is with him and the Father. And then long came the Holy Spirit. Amen? Like I said, the first week we talked about the power of the oneness. The power that comes with being on one accord. Last week we talked about the purpose. Purpose. Do you remember that? The reason why Christ came. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man to come for one other, no other reason but this. To seek and to save those who were lost. You could take a shout break right there. Talk about us right now. He came to seek and save those who didn't have a clue. Hopeless. No hope. He came for us. And tonight, we're going to be talking about the benefits that come with being on one accord with Christ. Last week we also talked about not just Christ's purpose, but your purpose. I know a lot of times in, in, in Bible study class, a lot of stories are shared. and I, I, I shared a few, but I don't share many because this Bible study class is so important to me, especially in the days that we're living in right now. I believe, I know that we're living in the last days. There's evidence, there's proof. The Word of God shows us clearly that we are living in the last days. And people take it lightly. We say that too loosely. Oh, we're living in the last days. But we haven't made a change. And I'm so glad the Lord birthed this in my spirit. One accord with Him. Because He knows we can't make it in this world without Him. And a, 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 a testimony is good. A testimony gets your attention. And we can relate to testimonies of others and what they've been through. Keep sharing your testimony. Keep telling people about the goodness of the Lord. But you want to make sure you're rooted and grounded in something. Your foundation, your feet ought to be secure in the Word of God. We, I, 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 I don't claim to be no expert in the Word of God, but that, that I do know. I do know I cannot make it or survive without Him, without the Word of God. So tonight we're talking about the benefits. Please don't get mistaken with the worldly benefits. Because I know when you heard the title, when you hear me talk about the purpose and the power, and then I said the third class is going to be about the benefits. I'm not talking about the big homes. I'm not talking about the cars. To me, those are blessings. Those are perks. But the benefit, we're going to hear that tonight. But let me, as I set up the stage, I want to remind you of some things that leads up to the benefit. How do you get the benefits? How do we celebrate? How do we uh, live? and own up to the benefits that Christ had given us. First of all, they have to be revealed through his word. Acts chapter 1. We know Acts chapter 1. And one of the favorite verses that we like to read is one in Acts 1 and 8. I'm going to start at verse 7. It said, he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or the days the Father has set by his own authority but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Listen to that very carefully. The power we talked about. I had to touch on it to get to the benefits. The power we talked about. We cannot receive this power until God reveals it or gives it to us. They had to wait. Jesus had died. He had went. He went home to be the Father. He told him. Why are you looking up? They do. Why are you looking up? He gave to the same mouth. Where you went up, he's going to come back. But they waited on the Holy Spirit, the power. The power, which is the God that lives in us. We talk about the oneness now. The oneness of Christ. The oneness of his love. The oneness of his power. The, love is, the oneness of his forgiveness. The oneness of his hope is wrapped up in the God, the Holy Spirit. That God that lives within us. Don't miss that. Please don't miss that. You cannot make it on your own. You're not intelligent enough. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough wisdom to be able to make it on your own. Even when it comes down to marriages, 
Every marriage ceremony I had to perform, even when we did the counseling, I let them know if Christ is not in the center of your marriage, it's not a marriage. Because it will be tested. And you need something other than your own strength in order to make it. And you can use marriage, you can use on your job, you can do any type of situation you might be in. You're going to need Christ. There's power in the oneness in Christ to be able to make a difference in other people's lives. People get tired of you telling your testimony and you don't ever add Jesus Christ to it. And you never show them the God, how God made a way out of no way. How God opened the door. How God provided the sinner, the sinner. But ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall become witnesses. You cannot be an effective witness. You cannot be a man or a woman of influence unless you have been endowed with the Holy Spirit. You have opened your heart, not your physical heart, your heart to receive the instructions that come from the Word of God. You accepted the Son and His finished work. If I could stop there for a moment to talk about his finished work. The reason why people lose hope in things and people and situations is because they truly don't believe in the finished work of Christ. When Christ came and died for our sins, you heard it, you know the story. When he died for our sins, he hung on the cross. We, we, we're approaching, we're in Lent season right now, but also approaching Easter and Good Friday, uh, Resurrection uh, Day. We call it Resurrection Day, not Easter, but. We're approaching that, and we take the seven last sayings of Christ so nonchalant, like they had no significant meaning. But what they did was reenacting the last seven sayings of Christ from the cross. And it's so powerful, and the one I love the most, when he said, it was finished. The work that he came to do, the purpose that he came, the power and the evidence he showed, the demonstration, the examples that he said. He showed you by being in one step with the Father. He said, I come to do the will of my Father. I come to do nothing else. The will of him, I come to do the will, the will, the mind, the thought, the plan of him who sent me. And it was God that said he so loved the world and he gave his only begotten Son. He gave Christ. To die of a horrible death, but to take the sting of sin away from us. I want to take you back to remind you, don't let this world get you so distracted where you forget his finished work. I know where I'm going. I'm leading to the benefits, but you need to hear that as believers. The reason why we won't tell people to come to church, because we have forgotten his finished work. We forgot all the foundation he had laid before us. The people's lives he had changed. The difference he made because he was connected. He was in, 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 in solidarity. He was in unity. He was in step with his father. And we can, have, we can have that same ability to make a change in other people's lives if we learn how to get in step with Christ. That's what I've been teaching. Not to give you no testimony to tell you how good. We know God has been good to us. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Christ. But his word had to be proclaimed. That's our job. Go ye therefore, Matthew 28. It tells us, go ye therefore to all nations, teaching and preaching. And what happened was the way that this world had caused believers to become silent. And how can we be silent as believers when we got the power of the Holy Spirit? Didn't leave us comfortless. Didn't leave us alone. He said, you shall receive power to be a witness, to be able to tell others. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm excited. I, I, I shot by myself right now. I'm feeling good right now. Didn't feel too good earlier, but now I do because something about the Word of God that electrifies us and changes us, make us feel better, make us want to share and help. You shall be witness in Jerusalem, home area, Judea, Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts, to the ends of the earth. We have that ability. We have been listening to the lion and you tell me you can't make a difference. What you say and what you do doesn't matter. People are not listening to you. They're not watching you. 
And we walk that same line because we won't push the like button and share. I'm telling you right now, push that like button and share. When our pastor get on here Sunday morning, when the ministers are doing that inspirational moment, push that like and share it and help the gospel go out. Somebody needs it. Somebody's going through something. And that one word in the morning, that powerful word that the Holy Spirit is leading a man or woman to be able to share for that moment could change somebody's life could snatch them up, up out of hell and put them on the right path. The benefits, understanding God's perfect will. Romans chapter 12, in IV version series, says, verse 1, Therefore I urge you, my brother and sister, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true purpose for worship and service. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to stop there real quick. Be, do not pattern your thought or your process as the world thinks, saying you hope that you can't make it. What was us? I heard a young man on Facebook who was talking about the gas prices. And he said he wanted to complain until the Holy Spirit spoke to him. The Holy Spirit would correct us and let us know that we have a God that can supply all of our needs. No, I don't want to pay no high gas prices. I know you don't. We have to travel. We have to take in consideration that it just takes money to be able to get from A to B. But we have a God that's not bankrupt. He's not bankrupt. His supply, he's got plenty of money. God's got everything that we need. And if we stay in unison with him, we stay united with him, we stay in solidarity with him, we continue to walk by faith and not by sight and do what God called us to do. Follow his instructions. Follow his statutes. Follow his commandments, his ways. And he said he will direct our path. He, meaning he will provide for us. So we don't need to be conformed or thinking or sounding like the world. We need to sound like believers. Holding up that bloodstained banner. So we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And we're marching by faith. We can't see it, but we can believe it. I wish I had somebody out there with agreement right now and just shout hallelujah. Because God has the power and he gave us the authority to be able to tread over serpents and scorpions. And he said, by now, any means, anything shall harm you if we stay in unity with him. Be not transformed to the, oh, two. Be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think different. Think like God. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Then you will be able to test and approve what he is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Perfect will. The Bible says in the book of James, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. The Lord wants your soul to prosper. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be able to make a difference in other people's lives. He wanted you to be that example for him. And we cannot be the example for Christ. Not a good one. If we don't trust his word, if we don't proclaim his word, because we can never reap the benefits of his word by being disconnected. I'm setting it up. I know where I'm going. I know exactly where I'm going. I just need you to pray with me and enjoy the ride. God's divine revelation, his plan, that's part of the benefit. By natural reason, man can know God's with uncertainty. You can know it for sure on the basis of his works. But there is another order of knowledge which man could not possibly arrive by his own power. There's a direction you can't get there on your own power. The order is his divine revelation. His divine revelation. Say that with me. Divine revelation. Through his complete free decision, God has revealed himself and given himself to man. When he sent his son, God gave himself to us. Something to look at. 
Something that understands us. The reason why, we talked about the purpose last week, the reason why Jesus can make intercession for us, because he's been here. He's been tested. He's been tried. Now, I, I, I joke about this about guys on the job. I said, I, I, don't, I haven't read in the Bible where Jesus had some pressure from women. But I can imagine. I, he said every sin he was, he was tested with. Jesus is walking down the dusty roads of Jerusalem, Jericho, and he's healing people, opening up blind eyes. He's, he's causing the lame to walk. I knew he had some sisters chasing him. I, I, you, you, you don't have to believe me. If I was a sister, I'd have been chasing him. The, the, the property they was living in. Somebody got the power to be able to open up blind eyes. So you know he's been tested on those areas, even when it comes down to female. But he said he did not sin. He said, oh, I can't do that. I, I, I can't live like that. I, I kind of agree with you. We can't without this power, the divine revelation. But you've got to put yourself in position. You've got to unite with him. You've got to be in one step with the Father and the Son. You've got to have a good understanding of who he is. And you've got to have an open heart. Let this mind be. You've you got to start thinking like him. The only way you can think like Christ. People want to run away from church. I say you better run to church, especially now. Because that's where the word is being revealed. Through the man or the woman of God. Whoever the shepherd is of that house. You need to get in that house and see what God is saying for this area, for this time that we live in. It. It's so important, saints. Don't, don't sit home and say, I can get it over, over the internet. Like you're getting it right now. Yeah, you can get it. But if the church goes up, get back in there. Get back to work. Let your light shine. Do some works. Help somebody. Pray for somebody. Go to extra mile. You can make a difference. You can be a person of But I'm talking about divine revelation of God's word. Through his completely free decision, God has revealed himself, gave himself to man as well. This he does by revealing the mystery. We talked about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Fathers have not seen or has heard things, you know, God has revealed to them that love him, but God has revealed them. Talking about those secret things. Remember, the secret things. Can we be glorified? Can we re rejoice in some of the glory down here on earth? Yes, we can. But God can reveal it to you only if you have a personal relationship with him. Only if you seek in him. He said, they that seek me shall be found. God said, I'm here. I'm here. If your heart is ready, I'm right there. Those who seek him, they, that's the, those are the ones who God will begin to reveal his mystery, the hidden plan, his divine revelation to them, his plan of loving goodness, formed from all eternity in Christ. There's the connection, God and the Father. For the benefit of all men. There's the benefit. I know it's coming. It was coming. Not the world benefit. But the benefit of being united with Christ. One accord. That's the title of class. God birthed that enemy. He said, if our people don't realize the importance and the power and the purpose and the benefits that come with being on one accord with me, no sickness. No devil in hell, no demon, no cancer, no COVID, you name it. Yes, I know we got to die. Yes, I know we got to leave this place. But you know what the Word of God says? He said, he has the power and authority to deliver us out of every situation. And as long as we get united with Christ, we win. Paul said, the live is Christ in the die's game. Paul said, I benefit if I stay here. And I'm even better shape if I go home. Because Paul made up his mind. After the Lord changed his life, changed his name, gave him a new direction, gave him a purpose. And he began to reap the benefits. Well, oh, watch this. Watch this. Some benefits come with a price. Oh, 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 yes, they do. They come with it. Some price. We're going to get there. God has fully revealed this plan by sending us his beloved son. Our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. 
But God has revealed them. First Corinthians chapter 2. To them. Unto them. Reveal them. Unto us. By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Even the deep things of God. There's some deep things that God want to share with those who are on one accord with him. Because when he share these, share these deep things with you. The mess and the mayhem and all the confusion that the world's talking about, you won't get tripped up. It won't distract you, it won't lead you astray because God is revealing those deep things, the things that really matter. When I talk about benefits, like I said, most people think about, oh, my big house, my big car, or the money. Uh, I'm waiting on those type of benefits. Yeah, they're all blessings, but I call them perks. But the real benefits I'm talking about is that security, that personal security in Christ. The benefits is the covenant plan God made to man. The one that's bring power, then the purpose, and next to bring the plan of benefits. Defining the word benefits, dictionary says, an advantage or profit gain from something. Number two, a payment or gift made by an employer, this is the definition in the dictionary, a payment or gift made by an employer, the state, or an insurance company. Now we know there's many different types of benefits. We know there's wealth, welfare, which is a entitlement program to help assist people with their living or paying their bills. Benefits are good, they're needed. Home benefits, homeowner benefit. We need homeowner benefits, flood insurance, and those are awesome benefits, you know. Life insurance. We need some life insurance. Oh yeah. You had a funeral lady? A person wanted to show you in the family? Caused some problems, didn't it? Almost caused a fight, didn't it? Because we do need those benefits. Benefits. And there are many others. But if you notice, all of these benefits still come with some adjustments. It's still something you have to do to be able to receive those benefits. If there's any type of entitlement program, there's loops and bounds you got to jump through to be able to get those benefits. I know when it comes down to the veterans, in order to get their 100%, after serving their country and then coming back and suffering the way they did. They still had to gather themselves together and go fight for something they deserved. They had to make some adjustments. They had to do something. But the life insurance we have, the benefits we have, Jesus Christ paid it all. But there's still something we have to do. The Bible tells us in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, Sorry, verse 11, it said, It is a faithful saying. If we die with him, we will live also with him. Verse 12. If we suffer, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Consequences. Yes, Christ did it. But you still have a part to play. You still have a duty to carry out. You still have your assignment to be able to receive these benefits. You got to activate your faith. You got to believe in some things that you have never seen before sometimes. When your family is going against you, you have to stand on God's word and he will prove himself. Just give it time. But sometimes you're standing alone. Sometimes you have to go against the grain on your job. But if you stand by faith with good intentions and your motives are right, you're always going to win. Sometimes God tells us no. Sometimes God tells us to wait. Sometimes God said move. And these things he will reveal through his word to those who in step with him on one accord. Oneness, likeness. Oneness. Saying God that changes not. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. It says Jesus Christ the the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. 
We know that's the title chapter we use as title. But verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, and I change not. I, I wanted to put these verses in there for a reason. I want you to see that God's the same today as he was back then. He blessed them. He watched over his people. He provided for them. They had challenges. They had to suffer. They had to go through agony. They lost some loved ones, just like you. But they still trusted in him. The Bible says Abraham was counted as righteous because of his faith and love he had towards God. Jesus Christ hadn't died on the cross yet, but he still was, had a relationship with God the Father, the creator of all things. In the writing of David, Psalms 103, Psalms 34, David, he is always trying to get others to see God's goodness. Tonight, what is my assignment tonight? Is to get others to see God's goodness. To show you how really God is in this chaotic world that we live in. And our foundation scripture that we started on, St. John chapter 17, he said, Father, I'm coming home to be with you. Verse 11, I'm coming home to be with you. He said, now, Father, be with them as you was with me. Let them walk in the name that walk with me and kept me and provided for me, which is your name. And then he said, Lord, make them one as we are one. David was doing the same thing. Even in uh, Psalms 34, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue. It will always be in my mouth. Yeah, he's a man that messed up all the time. Messed up just like you and I. But David said, I will bless. I, he made up his mind. He made a decision. Because the God has been too good to him. The one that could have thrown him away. The one that had the opportunity to just snap his finger, blow a wind. And David would have turned it from something to nothing. David said, I, will I made up my mind to bless him at all times. His praise shall always be in my mouth. Even when I'm hurting. Even when it took my family, my, my wife and children. David lost a lot of things. He said, I, I, I'm still going to bless the Lord. Yeah, I ran from something, but I'm still going to bless the Lord. Yeah, I had your eye killed, but I'm still going to bless the Lord. Lord, I don't have my finances to God. I'm still going to bless the Lord. Yeah, she walked out. He walked out on me. Lord, I'm still going to bless the Lord. Lord, I made a decision to stand for you. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will repeatedly, continually, always be in my mouth. But David didn't stop there. He, he, he went down to verse 3 and 4. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us. David said, i got to encourage somebody. i got to tell somebody about his goodness. How good he's been to me. The benefits that I receive. David said, I was a bad man. I was blessed. Took advantage of my blessing. Wasn't appreciative of it. Have you ever took advantage, uh, advantage or, uh, uh, over someone who blessed you? I know I did it with my parents. You know, some people that treated me very well, took advantage of them, took their kindness for weakness. Had to pay, had to reap what I sowed. But I'm thankful for the journey. Sometimes we need to thank the devil. No, I don't want to thank the devil. I know they say that. I don't want to give him no thanks. He done brought too much hell in my life. I don't want to be thanking him. But sometimes we need to appreciate the journey that we went through. Those ups and down peaks in our life that we had. Because it made our testimony stronger. Now we are united with Christ. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. Now we have that benefit of his influence, his presence, God with us, living on the inside of us. Now we speak, when we tell others what we've been through, they don't just hear it, but they feel it. They can relate to it. You keep looking for a change. He said, some work, some plan. But God will give the increase. If you just be obedient and do what the Lord called and instructed you to do. If you take up the gift that was given to you and you invest your gift, You'll be amazed of the benefits that comes along with obedience. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. This is where I've been trying to get. I need y'all praying. I, I went over the verse in Hebrews about He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I went to Malachi 3 and 6. He changes not. To let you know that the same God that was with David, the same God that was with John chapter 17 and was praying unto his father. That was the powerful prayer. We talked about the posture of Jesus. How he had his head up. And wasn't a prayer of um, sorrow or agony. But it was a prayer of victory and thanksgiving. Said, now glorify me so I can continue to carry out my assignment. Was now in the Old Testament. Before all this came about, before St. John came about, David wrote this, Psalms 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now, when I was reading that and studying that, I read that many times before. But as I was studying that for this class, and as I was looking at this so closely, I can only imagine what David was thinking while he was writing this. Because I have done some things in my life since I've been saved that I broke God's heart. And he still allowed his goodness and his benefits to follow me because he chose me. If I could stop right there for a moment to those who listen on camera, on Facebook or, or um, YouTube, those who listen, if I could take a moment right there and say, God knows you, know what you was going to do before you did, before you was in your mother's womb. But even your next move, God already knows about it. But if you can hear God speak right now, you have an opportunity. God is knocking at somebody's heart. And even to say, folks, God is knocking at your mind. He's telling you to open that mind. Stop thinking like the world. And start listening to my instructions. There's benefits I have for you. There's, there's some deep things, some, some hidden mystery things I want to share with you. And I only want to share with you and nobody else. Because you hold the key to somebody else's salvation. David wrote this many years ago. But it still blessed me today that if David was right in this room and he wrote it today. A man of God. Somebody who united and was in solidarity instead with God. Holy Spirit was abiding over them and with them during that time. But we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us. The God in us. Now if your life is all jacked up and I'm not saying this like it'll be funny. If your life is all messed up and you say you're saved and you belong to Jesus Christ, I, I, what I think we need to do is do that self-analysis that I talked about the first week. We, we need to start checking some things out. We need to go back on our knees and call on God and say, Lord, I need you to create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Because if you live on the inside of me and I'm still thinking this crazy, even I'm not retaining the word of God or either I don't want to retain it. You have to check yourself out and say, what do I really want? Do you really want an understanding? The Bible tells in the book of James, if a man is lacking wisdom, lacking some understanding, let him ask me. I have it. I have the answer. And I will give it to him. Let's get back to this. Psalm 102, bless the Lord at all times. Oh, two, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He had to say it again. David had to say it. He said, this thing is getting good to me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Is that not what we're talking about tonight? All his benefits. Not the car. David didn't say, thank you for all the horses you gave. Thank you for making, making me king. Hey, those are perks. Those are blessings. But he was thankful that even though all the mistakes I made, you still didn't charge it to me. 
You don't have to let. Look, look, let's go a little further. Verse 3. But let me read verse 2 again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Talk about benefits, okay? Verse 3. Who forgiveth all thy iniquity, all my iniquities, all my trust, all my sins, all, all, all the things I did wrong. Who healed all my disease. Benefits. That's a benefit. Who redeemed thy life from destruction. Saul was trying to kill David. His own people was trying to kill him. They thought David led him astray. He said, Lord, you protected me from destruction. When the enemy was up against me, when I thought my life was over, I went to thinking with my own strength, with my own mind. I acted like a lunatic just to survive. Not to know that you were already protecting me. I acted stupid for nothing. If I realized that you were there with me all along, the benefits. David said, you redeemed me. You redeemed, brought me back. You established my footsteps from thy life, from destruction. You crowned me, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Part right there for me. Crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Be a man. If somebody crossed me after I done bailed them out, maybe two times, <laughs> I'd give it to you. That third time, I don't know if I really want to deal with you anymore. I, I, I might have had enough to hear, like, I done, listen, I done talked to you, I done warned you, I told you not to do that, I gave you some money, whatever I did to help you out. I, I, I love you, but I, I can't keep loving you if you don't change. David said, you call me, you establish my going, you made provision for me. I messed up when I knew better. I knew those victories came from you and not from me. I know I didn't kill the bear and the lion on my own. I know it was you. I know it was, when I killed the lion, it was you and the stone. I represented you. I was excited about you. But then when my flesh got in the way and I started turning towards the things that I wanted to talk to somebody here, I started doing the things that I wanted to do. And you still kept showing your loving kindness and tender mercy towards me. You know, I'm talking to you while I'm talking to me. God still showed loving kindness and tender mercy. David had to take time out to thank God for that. Some more benefits. Verse 5. Who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Gave me fresh wings. Gave me a new attitude. Gave me new energy. Yeah, I, I, I want to go to church. I want to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. I want to invite somebody to church. We ought to be in such a hurry to invite people out to the Word of God. I know I can't see your hands, but if you could just throw your hands up. Just, just these, I'm just being totally honest with you. These last six months, even in, starting in January, the, 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 the type of preaching that we're getting, I, I've been hearing my pastor preach a long time. I know you had to. But it's something about these last few months of preaching. And it's because he's in step. He's on one accord with his Savior, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in him. He allowing the Holy Spirit to have his way. He's being obedient and listening to the instruction. What should I say? When should I say it? How should I say it? And even though it might not be, you might not see many people getting saved, I tell you what, I'm saved. It rejuvenated me. Gave me a new walk. Gave me a new walk talk. Gave me, a, gave me an attitude to want to be aggressive spreading the good news of the gospel. No, I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. I don't care if it's the elite or the eloquent, the ones who are, are very knowledgeable or if somebody poured in the gutter. I still have the same enthusiasm because I have been poured into. 
And if you can, if you get excited about what's being poured into you, that ought to excite you to want to bring somebody else to church. Not only that, don't just bring them. You are the church. Take that word with you and open that thing up and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. They need some light in this dark world that we're living in. One of these days, one of these days is going to all be over and we're going to have to stand before the Lord and he's going to ask the question. You had the opportunity. I helped you. I made a way for you. How come you didn't? You had it. You was around it. I, I remember T.D. Jakes preached a message years ago, years ago. And it was called Grasshoppers Don't Eat Grapes. I share this a lot now when I'm teaching. It was called Grasshoppers Don't Eat Grapes. And he was saying how the grasshopper climbs on the vine, the grapevine, and he walks on the, on the uh, leaves, and, and then he gets on the grapes. And all his little legs, he got many of them, all little legs and little toes, if he got toes, I don't know what the grasshopper got. But they walk in and they touch in the grape. They, they all over the grapes. They touch in it. But guess what? All that goodness, all that juice and sweetness, plumpness of the grape. But guess what? Grasshoppers don't eat grapes. That's how some Christians are. We all own the blessing. It's all around us. But we don't want to bite into it. They should all taste and see that the Lord is good. If you take a bite, if you take a step, if you open your mouth, if you begin to share, you'll see the goodness. You'll feel the goodness. And even if personal life don't change in front of you, you shouldn't be looking for that anyway. You know you did what God asked you to do. David said, these are benefits. Who satisfy my mouth with good things? You gave me something good to eat. You gave me something good to say. You renew my youth. You renew me back to my youth. Like an eagle. He said, the Lord executed his righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Those who are heavy hearted down feel like it's over. He executed his righteousness right way of living, right standard and his judgment. If you're in unity with God, you don't have to worry about the judgment. But if you're not, he made known his ways unto Moses. His acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. David said, not only did he bless me, he blessed Moses too. He said, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we serve a God that is slow to anger, not quick on the trigger? Because as soon as you got up there, I'm teaching the word right now, step out of this pulpit and get in an argument with my wife, God crushed him like a bug. Aren't you glad he's I, I don't mean to make light of that. But God's got the power and authority to do it, and he don't, because he's slow to anger. He, he don't allow the mess we wrestle with in our mind and in our, on our lips. He don't allow those things to stop his purpose and his love and his mercy and his kindness and his long-suffering for his people. Why you sitting there mad at your sister and brother? Why you ain't talking to somebody in the family right now? Why you ain't called nobody a long time? I ain't gonna call them, they better call me. You need to quit playing. Pick up the phone and ask them to forgive you. Get back in your word and start living again. Distraction. The enemy knows exactly what he's doing. He knows that a house divided can't stand. We need to learn it. We need to rehearse it. Verse 7, he made known his ways unto Moses. Children of Israel. Slow to anger and plenty in mercy. A little bit more, then I'm, I'm going to get off of this. He will not always chime. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us. This is the big one. God has not dealt with us after our sins of what we deserved. Nor rewarded us according to our nickel. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Nor reward us according to iniquity. For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. I'm going to stop right there. If I can talk about Adam real quick, I've got a few more minutes and I'll be wrapping this thing up. It's, going to be, it's been a joyful ride. But God shared his mercy to Adam and Eve. Even though they sinned, they let the devil uh, trick them into eating the fruit. God still said his word in Genesis 3.15. God promised them salvation and offered his covenant unto them. Oh yeah, God still offered his covenant unto Adam. Also, Abram. In order to gather together um, scattered humanity, God called Abram from his country and his kings, his family and his father's house and changed his name to Abraham. That is the father of a multitude of nations. On the day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, changed his name and said, to your descendants, I give this land. And that's Genesis chapter 15. God made a covenant with Abraham because he found in his righteousness because of his obedience. And his faithfulness unto God. That's benefits. God chose Abraham and made a covenant with him and his descendants. By the covenant God formed to his people and revealed his law unto Moses, all of these, he prepared salvation. He prepared salvation, a way of escape. He gave them some benefits, even though. They were living under the law. God knew he purposed in his mind that I'm going to find a way to unite my people back unto me. And it leads us right to this. God has said everything in his word. Son in whom he had established his covenant. Talking about Jesus Christ. We're back in the New Testament. He has established his covenant forever. The son, his father, definitive word. So there will be no further revelation after this. When Jesus Christ said it was finished, no other revelation needs to come. Everything has been revealed. We know John talks about revelation. I'm talking about those, the deep things, the secret things of God. He revealed everything through his son. He said no further revelation after this. By love, God has revealed himself and gave himself to man. He has provided a superabundant answer to the question that man asked himself about the meaning and purpose of his life. We ask that what is our purpose? God has revealed it through his son. Peter, some of the benefits that Peter benefited from. Peter had the opportunity to feed Jesus' sheep. Jesus told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Peter had the opportunity to minister the gospel to the Jews. Peter served and died for Christ. Peter changed lives. Peter had eternal life. John, St. John, the John I'm talking about right now, the beloved, the end time prophet came through John. He lived a long life, talking about benefits. He escaped physical death time at the time. To, it was his appointed time to die. God revealed love to many through John. John was a caretaker of Jesus' mother. Paul, Apostle Paul, changed his name from Saul to Paul. A missionary, journalist, that wherever he went, taught and proclaimed the word of God with boldness and authority. He escaped, escaped death several times. He ministered to the Gentiles and even us, those who were alienated from the cross. He healed others by the power of God. He wrote 13 books. He talking about benefits. And God gave him eternal security. Gary Mack, talking about myself, my benefits. Name has been changed from lost to found. I'm talking to somebody else. Change me from a sinner to a saved and sanctified man of God. Brought me out of brokenness and to call me blessed. 
I was a foster child, but I have been adopted in the family and through the blood of Jesus Christ. I have a permanent seat in the kingdom. No goodness of my own. But because of his love, because of his purpose, and I can reap the benefits of having a seat, a permanent seat, made just for me. I don't know if it's a sun chair. I don't know if it's a baby chair. All I know is a seat. And I have a seat in the kingdom because I decided. He chose me and I decided to be in solidarity with him, the Father, because of his love. He sent his son. I said to the finished work. And I received the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me all truth. United with the Father, we stand. United with the Son, we stand. United with the Holy Spirit, we are connected as the body of Christ of believers. And my closing, united with Christ, we stand in one accord. If you don't have Jesus Christ, and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do have the opportunity right now. All you have to do is call on his name. The Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know where to go get the word. You heard it tonight. God demonstrated his love towards us while we were yet in sin. And he said, I sent my son because I love you. I want to be in solidarity with you. I want to pull you back to me because I have some secret things. I have some blessings. I got a purpose in your life. I got a plan. And that plan starts with you trusting me. You can open your heart tonight and say, Lord, I'm that sinner. Say, I want to be in oneness with you. I want to be in oneness with Christ. I want to reap those benefits. I want to know my power, my plan, my purpose. But most of all, I want to know the power of the cross, the death, burial, resurrection of our Savior. He's no longer dead. He's alive and doing well. And in my closing, I pray for those who listen. I pray that this word of God was a blessing to you. I thank my pastor for the opportunity. But most of all, I thank God for saving me and that I'm in one step with him. United with Christ we stand. One accord. God bless you. I love you. Pastor Gary Mack, until we meet.